Hello to everyone gathered for Net Inclusion 2017. I think you know I'd much rather be there with you in person, but there's a few things going on in Washington right now, like some pretty scary legislation that's been um, introduced, and not to mention uh, some of the other work uh, that's going on in defending our Constitution, and I'm honored to join you via video. I'd like to thank the National Digital Inclusion Alliance and St. Paul Public Library for making this conference possible. And of course, all the organizations and advocates promoting digital equity throughout America. As all of you know, there are so many challenges we must meet, from improving digital literacy skills to working to create better access to affordable devices. But today I'd like to focus on one key priority, broadband access. Today you don't need to live off a major highway or in a bustling city center to find a good job, start a business, or get a quality education, but you do need high-speed internet. Unfortunately, we know that some parts of our country are lagging behind. About one in four rural Minnesota households didn't have access to high-speed broadband in 2016. Every year I visit all of Minnesota's 87 counties. I've heard so many stories from families, entrepreneurs, and students about what this is like. One tribal member in Leech Lake told me what happened when he got Wi-Fi at his house. All of a sudden, they had a bunch of kids from the neighborhood hanging out in their yard, desperate for a good internet connection. Maybe they just wanted to do their homework. Recently, I heard about a cancer doctor who for years would have to drive to the McDonald's parking lot to read his x-rays because he didn't have a strong enough internet connection at home. Well, I don't think that's the way doctors should be reading x-rays. In the 1930s, we worked to bring electricity and telephone service to every home in America. Today, we need to put the same effort into expanding broadband. It's one of the biggest infrastructure challenges of our time. So I'm working in the Senate to promote broadband investment and deployment. We need to make sure our policies keep pace with the transformative power of broadband. That's why last year I helped launch the Bipartisan Senate Broadband Caucus with my friend Senator Shelley Capito. Angus King, Heidi Heitkamp, John Bozeman, look at the states, West Virginia, Maine, North Dakota, Arkansas. We all understand what it's like to have that digital divide. Our mission is to share information and advocate for the policy changes needed to make broadband deployment as easy as possible. I've also worked to pass some important legislation this year. In January, the Senate Commerce Committee passed the Mobile Now Act which included a bipartisan amendment I sponsored to require coordination when highway projects are built. That way broadband infrastructure is installed at the same time. So in other words, we only dig once. I'm hopeful the bill will come up for a vote in the Senate soon. I also introduced the Measuring the Economic Impact of Broadband Act with Senator Capito. This bill would get us better data about how broadband impacts education, healthcare, and employment all of which can help local leaders make the case. Finally, I recently led a bipartisan group of 48 senators calling on President Trump to include broadband as part of any infrastructure initiative. I believe this is an important issue we can work on. There's a reason broadband has such bipartisan support. The rise of technology brings so many opportunities with it, but only to those who have the access and the education to take advantage of it well, we've come a long way in the last few years. We know we have more work to do. We have to make sure that we keep neutra internet neutrality in place. We have to make sure everyone has access. We have to make sure that we do something about this digital divide. It's going to take all of us working together, from our private sector partners to the nonprofit advocates to our government officials. That's why this conference is so important, why all of you are important. I know that together we can expand access to essential technology, connect every region in our country, and build a digital foundation for a better and brighter future. Thank you all for attending today and for the important work you're doing to promote digital inclusion in Minnesota and around the country. Enjoy the rest of the conference. You deserve it.